Good afternoon, church family and viewing audience. I am Pastor Brad Franklin. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ this afternoon. I am so glad that you have uh, taken time out of your day to join me this day. We are going to uh, hear from the Word of God this day. I'm going to offer uh, a modern day parable for you to to hear and reflect on uh, and also uh, offer some some other things in this manner that are a, a bit out of the ordinary but I know that it will be a, a blessing and I will explain it a little bit more after I open us up with a word of prayer but I am glad that you have tuned in let us pray Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus O oh God we pause this moment as we should each and every day to offer our thanks unto you, O oh God, because uh, giving thanks, offering thanks unto you who uh, is the Alpha and the Omega, uh, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, Lord, the beginning and the end, O oh God, the one who has already conquered all. Lord, that is absolutely amazing and mysterious <clears throat> and uh, a, a, a true uh, example of your mightiness Lord uh, your uh, your uh, bigness if you will Lord for for we appell in comparison Lord to you for we are weak Lord and you are mighty and what a wonderful thing that is to to offer lord is thanks and gratefulness to you for the gifts that you have given to us for uh, the uh, very preciousness lord uh, of life that you have breathed into us for our church for this day lord and for each and every detail uh, of the very existence of life itself. Lord, you are in the details. So we pray you into uh, the details of, of this day and certainly into this time of manna together. We ask this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So folks, just uh, just wanted to give you a heads up uh, about uh, Sunday's worship. I will be uh, leading worship uh, for uh, this Sunday, but I, I did want to let you know that the director of Camp Caney, our Methodist camp uh, in Minden, Louisiana, will be offering the Word of God and also uh, Camp Caney, a witness about uh, Caney for us that uh, that Sunday. So um, uh, Patrick Thomas is is his name, uh, along with his wife Jess. They are wonderful people. Uh, the blessing is that Benton United Methodist Church has a strong relationship partnership with uh, Pat and Jess and. Uh, he has been gracious enough to come and, and give us a, a, a witness about Caney and also bless us with uh, his, uh, his preaching testimony uh, as well. Uh, much like uh, any other uh, organization during uh, 2020, of course, Camp Caney uh, could not have uh, summer camp and a lot of their uh, fall uh, gathering so financially of course things are are strapped at the camp so one effort uh, that that Caney has put out uh, to uh, churches to to the the, the Shreveport district is uh, reaching out to the local body of Christ and and asking uh, for for love offerings and uh, like the amazing church that uh, that Benton United Methodist is, uh, we have uh, stepped up in many different ways to to do that. Uh, so so that will be a, a part of Patrick's testimony uh, to lay it on the the hearts of the congregation there if they would pray about uh, giving a a love offering or even. Um, making a way for a tithe to go to 
uh, the operations and ministry of Camp Caney. So I, I will let uh, Patrick speak to that. Uh, wh what I would like to do uh, now is to offer a meditation uh, for us and then move into some scripture and also a, a modern uh, parable that uh, that I found and read over and thought was absolutely uh, wonderful. I'll pray for us and then at the end of the prayer and benediction that I'll offer, I, I, I want you to view at the end of our midweek manna time a, a, a video that uh, that was put together that Camp Caney asked us to do as a way of plugging uh, Camp Caney and, and certainly um, uh, reaching the hearts of uh, men, women, and children in being uh, invested in Caney, although we cannot physically be there uh, through through the, the, the gifts of your financial giving. So I wanted you to see that testimonial. And you will also see in that, in that video snippet that um, Bent United Methodist Church has been very present on the, on the sacred ground of, uh, of Caney. So you, you will see uh, different things there that, uh, that I know will, will inspire you in that video. But first, let me read this devotion from Jesus Calling, the wonderful Sarah Young, October 14th. It says, Be prepared to suffer for me in my name. All suffering has meaning in my kingdom. Pain and problems are opportunities to demonstrate your trust in me. Bearing your circumstances bravely, even thanking me for them, is one of the highest forms of praise. The sacrifice of thanksgiving rings golden-toned bells of joy throughout heavenly realms. On earth also, your patient suffering sends out ripples of good tidings in ever-widening circles. When suffering strikes, remember that I am sovereign and that I can bring good out of everything. Do not try to run from pain or hide from problems. Instead, accept adversity in my name, offering it up to me for my purposes. Thus, your suffering gains meaning and draws you closer to me. Joy, I love this, picture this imagery here, joy emerges from the ashes of adversity through your trust and thankfulness. And that is certainly a, a, a biblical truth, that there is a new life. There's something that can truly blossom out of uh, the ashes of of pain, uh, of suffering, uh, and, and it's there that we can uh, embrace what uh, God is is doing, and and that that doing that new life um, is uh, is something that we need to uh, ultimately uh, embrace as a as a gospel truth. So, uh, Jesus calling, what a wonderful devotion this day. So I, I want to turn to the scripture that uh, that inspired me and then I'll then I'll explain a little bit about this parable that I want to read. So if you have your Bibles out, I'm uh, turn now to Luke chapter 12 verse 34. And I'll read it twice. It says, wherever your treasure is, there the heart there the desires of your heart will also be. Verse 34, the 12th chapter of Luke. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior. Thanks be to God. Amen. So this uh, parable that, uh, that I found uh, spoke to me, uh, and, and I certainly hope it uh, speaks to you this day. Uh, as I was uh, reading and, and found it, it, it uh, reminded me of the uh, very uh, moving uh, and beneficial 
ministry that, that we have of uh, the Penny Ministry uh, in, uh, in memory of Mark David Crosby and certainly the, the blessing uh, that young man was to uh, his mom and dad and certainly to this congregation, Benton United Methodist Church, and the continued blessing that he is and how Mark David's legacy continues to live on uh, in the hearts of the, the believers this day. So I'm, I'm thinking about the Penny uh, King this day, Mark David Crosby, uh, and, and I'm also celebrating uh, in the fact that uh, when we had our uh, Penny uh, ministry uh, highlight in this summer, we, we raised over $5,000 in pennies. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? That money is not uh, put in some savings account and, and kept from uh, kept from anyone. It is poured right back into the community and that is just Jesus Christ working in that. So I, I'm, I'm thinking about pennies, I'm thinking about Mark David Crosby and I found uh, this parable, and sure enough, you ready for this? The title of this modern parable is, Found a Penny, Pick It Up. So, bear with me for a moment, I'm going to read this parable. How many times have you been out walking and have noticed a penny on the ground? Here at Benton United Methodist Church, I'm sure we all have, right, and continue to do so. Most of the time, people just keep walking. After all, it's just a penny, right? But then there are some folks who will pick it up. Usually it's because of a superstitious promise of luck. But a story with a very different reason has been making its rounds on the internet. And it's too good not to share. It's a rich man who stops to pick up a grimy penny, and his reason is a great lesson for us all. God is patient. Several years ago, a friend of mine and her husband were invited to spend the weekend at the husband's employer's home. My friend Arlene was nervous about the weekend. The boss was very wealthy, with a fine home on the waterway and cars costing more than her house. The first day and the evening went well, and Arlene was delighted to have this rare glimpse into how the very wealthy live. The husband's employer was quite generous as a host and took them to the finest restaurants. Arlene knew she would never have the opportunity to indulge in this kind of extravagance ever again, so she was absolutely enjoying herself. As the three of them were about to enter an exclusive restaurant that evening, <clears throat> excuse me, the boss was walking slightly ahead of Arlene and her husband. He stopped suddenly, looking down on the pavement for a long, silent moment. Arlene wondered if she was supposed to pass him. There was nothing on the ground except a single darkened penny that someone had dropped and a few cigarette butts. Still silent, the man reached down and picked the penny up. He held it up and smiled, then put it in his pocket as if he had found a great treasure. How absurd! What need did this man have for a single penny? Why would he even take the time to stop and pick up this grimy thing? Throughout dinner, the entire scene just nagged at her. Finally, she could stand it no longer. She casually mentioned that her daughter once had a coin collection and asked if the penny he had found had been of some kind of value. A smile crept across the man's face as he reached into his pocket for the penny and held it out for her to see. She had seen 
many pennies before. What was the point of this? Look at it, he said. Read what it says. She read the words. United States of America? No, not that. Read further. One cent? No. Keep reading. In God we trust? Yes. And? And if I trust in God, the name of God is holy, even on a coin. Whenever I find a coin, I see that inscription. It is written on every single United States coin, but we never seem to notice it. God drops a message right in front of me, telling me to trust Him? Who am I to pass it by? When I see a coin, I pray. I stop to see if my trust is in all caps, in God at that moment. I pick the coin up as a response to God. That I do trust in Him. For a short time at least, I cherish it as if it were gold. I think it is God's way of starting a conversation with me. Lucky for me, God is patient and pennies are plentiful. When I was out shopping today, I found a penny on the sidewalk. I stopped and picked it up and picked it up and realized that I had been worrying and fretting in my mind about things that I could not change. I read the words, In God we trust, and had to laugh. Yes, God I get the message. Love that parable. Find a penny, pick it up. You know, Mark Crosby shared with me uh, during this uh, this time when we were uh, raising um, funds, raising raising and and putting it out to the congregation to bring uh, pennies uh, to put right back into the community. His words uh, to me were: every time that he finds. Uh, a penny. Uh, he says that his son, Mark David, is smiling down from him, uh, from heaven. And, and that's that's very, very, very touching. Uh, and, and I think that is so true. Uh, and also, too, I, I hope that when you find a penny, uh, you can, too, uh, think of uh, Mark David and the uh, true uh, testament of God's love that, that he was, and, and two, Mark David would want us to ultimately trust in God because I know that there are many, many days when we are filled with worry and we are heavy burdened. So wanted to share that with you. Um, I, I think that really speaks um, clarity into this verse from Luke 12, verse 34. Uh, wherever your treasure is, there, de there the desires of your heart uh, will be also. So, beautiful text. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me offer a word of prayer for us as we close our midweek manna time together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, uh, so often it's the simple things in life, O oh God, that have uh, eternal value, that are treasures. Treasures, O oh God, that connect us in a, in a very deep and mysterious way uh, to you, O oh God. I, I pray that we can always have our eyes and our heart on and directed to the simple things like the sun rising and the sun setting, uh, the rainbows in the sky, the pennies that we find on the ground, the birds singing. So many things, oh God, that are the simple things 
in life, but have eternal value. Lord, I, I pray that this day and every day, O oh God, that we can ultimately put our trust in you. Lord, that we can, in faith, in trust, Lord, give to you what is weighing very heavy on our minds, on our hearts, on our bodies, and on our souls. Lord, we know that there's a lot of hurt and pain in this world, and it means so much, Lord, to know that we are being uh, prayed for, that we have a, a shoulder uh, to cry upon, someone to talk to, someone to pray for us. Lord, it's all a way, O oh God, that uh, directs us, that moves us toward trusting, not ultimately in ourselves, but in you. So I pray, Lord, that we can do that faithfully each and every day. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So, uh, folks, before I offer a closing benediction, I I'm going to invite you to stay tuned after word for the Camp Caney uh, snippet that we made uh, this past summer uh, to reach uh, the, the hearts of those who would consider giving a, a financial gift uh, to Caney. So let me just place that on your heart as well to, to think about and to pray about. It's a wonderful camp where children are being discipled and growing close to the Almighty God and to Jesus Christ His Son. So I leave you with this. May God bless us and keep us and in God we trust. Take care, and God bless you. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Pastor Brad Franklin at Benton United Methodist Church. Last year, Benton United Methodist Church had the wonderful opportunity of building a bridge that connected the, the camp to the lake. That was a blessing for us to do and I know that it ultimately was uh, a blessing for uh, the camp itself. I also look at that bridge as a wonderful spiritual metaphor. Bridges of course connect uh, point A to point B and I think about how at Camp Caney, which is truly holy ground, campers are connecting to one another. They're connecting to God Almighty. They are connecting to Jesus Christ. I have seen it for myself being a spiritual advisor there uh, for the last uh, few several years. Uh, it, it, it's a wonderful place to be and campers and counselors are all connecting to what the beauty of Caney has to offer. So I'm asking you uh, in this time as you are paying your bills each and every month, please consider giving to Caney, knowing that campers, meaning your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors, whomever gets the opportunity to go to Caney, they are connecting spiritually to something that is truly a rich and God-filled experience. Have a wonderful day and support Caney.